Hi everyone, it's Charmaine from Eco Mama. Hope you all can hear me okay. And sorry that I'm a little bit late. Technology these days, right? It's a bit cray cray. So I'm going to give everyone a second to jump on and if anyone is live on here, if you can give me a thumbs up or a like or a love, that would be super cool. Just to let me know that you can hear me before I get into the nitty gritty. I'll have some tea, which I do well. Doesn't look like anyone's on live. I did change the time last minute. Sorry about that. But trying to juggle this whole like working kids thing. <laughs> Each day has got a whole new um, range of challenges. So I'm going to jump in and if anyone uh, can give me a comment, if you can hear me or a like, that would be super awesome. Um, and for those of you that are going to jump on later, please hashtag after party so that I know that you were able to absorb this information and hopefully it's been helpful. Oh, hey, I've got someone on. Hello out there. If anyone's on, um, can you just please give me a comment or a like to let me know that you can hear me okay. Wow, this light's really horrible. Okay, cool. Thank you. Just um, make my forehead look gigantic. All right, so I'm here today as the last video um, of the Protect Mini series, which I've just really loved. I've really loved being able to share some knowledge with you. It's been really interactive. I've had lots of questions and lots of comments, and I just want to thank you so much for everyone who has enjoyed this series and hopefully gotten some really um, simple, empowering strategies to be able to take into your home. So. Thank you. Um, thank you for those of you who encouraged me to do it as well um, because there was a, a lot of self-doubt as to whether I was just going to overwhelm everyone with too much information and there's already so much information out there um, but I did it because it felt like it was bigger than me and I, need, I felt like a heart pulling to share this information. So I followed my heart and the guidance and it's been really lovely to do. So thank you everyone who were part um, of this mini series and I really hope it's been helpful if there's anything that's been super helpful for you I would love to know um, particular takeaways oh hey Prue um, I've thought about you actually while I'm doing this mini series and wondered if you had a chance to jump in and watch it um, so yeah if there's any particular takeaways that you've gotten out of the protect mini series I'd love to know um, I'd love to know what lands into your brain and absorbs really well because it's good for me to know um, that I'm explaining things um, in a way that you can actually absorb it and take it away into your homes so today I'm talking about what we're doing in our homes. So what we're doing holistically to support our immune system. And for me, I'm always taking it back to stress. So I think I've mentioned a few times and uh, that me and anxiety get along and you know we hang out quite a lot. And I'm sure if you're part of the Eco Mama community or you're at home with kids, you're probably feeling pretty stressed most of the time. Um, and I've, I specialize in mental health. So um, it's natural for me to attract people that are in this boat with me um, working through sometimes challenges that can come up with mental health stress and overwhelm being one of them. Um, hey Prue, hey I've been so busy. Yeah I know right? That's okay you can just watch them later honey all good and you know where I am if you need to pick my brain anyway. I'm sure you've got your hands full with your two little cherubs. <laughs> um, Okay, so I want to talk, the main thing I'm going to be talking about is stress and immunity. Because if we're walking around super stressed out all the time um, and hoping to not catch every bug that's going around, we're probably going to, we're probably digging our head in the sand a little bit. And I want to explain in a really simple way the way that stress affects your immunity. So I'll use myself as an example, running around, running a business, trying to work from home, um, trying to keep the house, you know, as I want to, homeschooling, supporting my husband who's away a lot um, for work, well, until now because he's on annual leave. So 
very typical. Everyone's got their own sort of story and we're all balancing our own level of stress in our own way. Um, so my body is super busy dealing with the stress. It's busy managing the cortisol. It's busy keeping me trying to get some sleep. It's busy trying to get some sort of food into my stomach. And then along comes a virus and my body is like over here just doing its own thing and distracted, dealing with all the stress. Hello virus, I'm just gonna come in and take over your whole body and I hadn't even noticed. Next minute, I'm walking around with COVID. Hopefully not. <laughs> so stress weakens the immune system because it's just super busy doing its own thing. Like if you're walking around really stressed, your body's just trying to keep itself alive. So your immune system isn't thriving. It's not optimal. It's not going to be firing um, all of those beautiful white blood cells at any virus that comes into your body. Um, so I could tell you, like, don't be stressed. <laughs> yeah, right. Like, that's not going to happen. If someone told me to not be stressed right now, I would probably laugh. But... There's things that we can do to buffer our stress. It's always an evolving journey on how we manage our stress. And for those of you that are part of this um, community, you probably might not feel like you handle your stress very well. And there can be a number of reasons for that. Mainly, uh, yeah, we can have some psychological reasons why we might not handle stress very well and traumas why we might not handle stress very well. But a lot of the time, the reasons why we don't handle stress very well is we've got too much input and not enough output. So too much going on to our nervous system and not enough time to balance it out. So we love the word balance. Some people like, are like, oh, balance isn't a real thing, but I really, I really do believe that balance is a real thing. At least it is for me. Because if my nervous system's turned up really high, I know I need to equally turn it back down. So it's not as simple as just saying, don't be stressed. What can we do in our homes to reduce our stress? Is it we look at the housekeeping or the housework with a different perspective can we look at the housework and be like wow we've had a really busy day today and i've been super busy and present with my kids instead of going holy shit, there's so much to do i need to do that i need to do this i need to do all that right now can we look at the housework and go i'm just going to sit and stare at it for a little bit longer and see if i can <sighs> Just breathe into the discomfort that comes with the ever enormous tasks of things to do. Because the more we can widen our tolerance of the discomfort, the more we can sit in the discomfort of what's around us. Even if we can hold it for one more second, we can look at that pile of dishes and go, I'm okay with you being there. I don't need to run over and do the dishes so that I can feel good about myself one more second can you sit there for one more second in that discomfort widen your bandwidth for that discomfort because the next time you see that pile of dishes you're not going to have as much of an emotional trigger to it because you've you've taught your nervous system a new skill of being able to see those dishes and not see it as like holy crap i need to do something something about that I hope that made a little bit of sense because that's a big topic about widening your nervous system. I wasn't expecting to go there today, but that's what we do. I hope that music isn't too loud in the background. Um, so yeah, stress management. So that's one way that I buffer my stress. So I'll look at the things that I, my body wants to run away from and I'll hold it that little bit longer. I'm trying to think of another example. So housework is a really great example for that or even notifications on my phone. So notifications on my phone that I need to get back to or reply back to um, that are asking me of something. Um, I'll just keep them there a little bit longer and see how long I can see them on my phone and not have to go, oh my God, I just need to get back to you because if I get back to you, then I'm okay, then I'll be okay. I'll leave them there just that little bit longer and widen my tolerance to those things, everyday stresses in our life. So that's just one little tip that I've got for stress management. I've got many tips for stress management because I do stress very well. Um, I overwhelm very well. I don't release my cortisol. Uh, genetically, I don't release my cortisol very well. So I have to constantly be looking at ways that I can buffer and manage my stress. Um, so that's just one tiny little drop in the ocean of tips and tools that I've got. Hey, honey. Um, 
So I've written a blog about stress and immunity and I'm going to share it into the group as well. I was supposed to do that a few days ago but I forgot that I said that so I'm going to drop it into here now and just a few gentle reminders on how stress affects our nervous system and our immune system and what we can do to counterbalance that a little bit because saying don't stress is BS. We are going to be stressed. And it's a normal human experience uh, that we shouldn't really be judging, right? It's a normal human emotion to feel stress. We just need to take a step back from it sometimes and do what's in our control when there's so much that's out of our control. So I hope that makes a little bit of sense about why feeling stressed is counterproductive for supporting your immune system. So you're stressed out, you're busy, body is busy dealing with the stress. It's very easy for you to get sideswiped by some sort of invader. Also, if your body's weakened, you don't have the robust energy to be able to fight off that infection. So it's a lot easier for that infection to come into your body and to be able to take over the shop a lot quicker because you're kind of like this, like uh, just trying to kick the, the virus out, <laughs> if that makes any sense. Um, so we have a lot of research about the profound effect that stress has on our inflammation. So when we are stressed and we're producing a lot of cortisol, cortisol is, an inflam is inflammatory to the body. So cortisol being our stress hormone, we produce a lot of cortisol when we're stressed. So if we're chronically stressed and we've got really high levels of cortisol, cortisol will turn on inflammation in the body. Hey Renee, um, so if our body is super inflamed, again, it's busy dealing with the inflammation. It's not going to notice when this little virus comes creeping in and sideswipes you. So it, this stuff is researched. I'm not, it's not just a theory of mine. It's heavily researched that stress causes inflammation. And at the basis of most illness is stress and inflammation. So where can we bring down the stress? Where can we bring down the inflammation? And I've covered that a little bit on how you can reduce your um, dietary stress and how you can use food as medicine and how you can use supplements and things like that as well. So go back to video one and two if you haven't already looked at those because those tools are going to be fundamental in helping you balance the stress. This is why I've put stress at the end of the topic because we need to get those foundational steps right. What we're eating, what we're doing, what we're taking, and how is that going to take the other stresses out of our bodies, that body and environmental stress, so that we can optimally be healthier, which is why we're all here. Um, so that is stress, inflammation. Let me gather my thoughts. Stress and inflammation. Okay, next step, sleep. So I learned this really cool thing the other day. It was in relation to COVID, but I imagine it would be in relation to a bunch of other things as well. So COVID is the disease that the coronavirus creates. So corona is the actual virus itself, which is a strain of SARS, um, the SARS virus, and the disease that co corona creates is COVID. So uh, people who produce quite a lot of melatonin are naturally more resistant and more able to fight off COVID disease and the coronavirus. So the coronavirus could come in contact with your body, but it's not going to get in there and go gangbusters. Um, so people who naturally produce higher levels of melatonin are our children and our pregnant mamas, which is really cool and very fascinating. So there is a question as to whether um, melatonin supplementation might be helpful um, for reducing risk of contracting um, COVID. There's no actual studies on that though. At this stage it is just a theory but I think it's a really cool theory and it also goes back into my mind melatonin is our sleep hormone. So melatonin is the guy that gets you ready to sleep. He's not the guy that keeps you asleep. Melatonin gets you ready to sleep. So uh, I was just going to go into a cortisol. No, I won't go there. Okay, melatonin is the guy that gets you to sleep. So we can naturally support our melatonin production. So in my mind, I'm going, okay, if I can naturally support my melatonin production, I can support my body to want to go to sleep a little bit earlier. I'm giving myself some extra support from my immune system and I'm reducing my risk of contracting COVID. Pretty cool, just by going to bed earlier. 
So I'm Nana, absolute Nana. Most of my friends know that. <laughs> um, when I'm putting the kids to bed at like 7, 7.30, I'm totally happy to just stay asleep from there. And this whole daylight savings change has been awesome because now I can have a good excuse to get to bed even earlier. But what it means for me is I'm consciously changing the way that I do the evening routine things. So instead of leaving stuff to like six o'clock at night and then running around like an idiot trying to get myself into, get kids into bed by 7.30 a, I'm starting my bedtime routine at like four o'clock. Renee, I'm a nana too. <laughs> we have so much in common, girlfriend. Um, so yeah, I'm starting bedtime routine at like four o'clock. I've got dinner on the table by five. The kids are in their pajamas by the time we're having dinner. I'm feeling relaxed by the time we're crawling into bed at seven and we're all going to bed a lot earlier. So I'm ticking, sending brain uh, messages to my brain that, um, sending messages to my brain that I'm doing something good for my immune system, which is, so important right um so sleep and that sleep and melatonin but i can't emphasize enough the uh the role that sleep has in regulating the immune system like majority of our immune system works at night time that's why uh you generally can be fine throughout the day and then at night time you're going to start cracking a fever or you know your kids are unwell and they're kind of just a bit snotty and off during the day but then they're up all night with temps and coughing and all of that kind of stuff because the immune system is really active at night time it's busy it's getting shit done while you're sleeping it's cleaning out all the old guys it's bringing in the new army to fight off the day or fight off any guys that are trying to invade you so it's profound the work that the immune system does at night time so we can't sleep enough if we want to be supporting our immunity or if we're recovering from something or if we're working through chronic illness or autoimmune conditions sleep is your friend i spoke to one of my beautiful autoimmune clients this morning and my biggest thing i can say to her at the moment is just rest you need to be resting sleeping prioritizing sleeping now if you're one of those people that really struggle to get to sleep and stay asleep they're kind of two different mechanisms and they work a little bit differently getting to sleep and staying asleep. We don't treat them both the same, we treat them actually differently. But if you are one of those people, then we need to really be working on that. How can we get you into a beautiful, deep, restorative sleep? That's a conversation probably for another day because it's a big conversation. But how can we get you into a deep, restorative sleep so your immune system can have the time to do what it needs to do at night and keep you healthy and, and ready to go throughout the day? So if you are struggling with insomnia, please reach out to me because I love that topic and I've been there myself and it is crap. Um, and I have a lot of tools um, that we can whip out to be able to help you through that and to be able to reset that system because all it is is a training of the brain right um, for majority of people it's we have become an insomniac or we are moving we used to be out of sleep and then we had kids and now we can't so there's ways that we can buffer around that so you can still sleep and still get the benefits of your immune function throughout the night sleep and who doesn't love sleep it feels good, right? <laughs> um, so essential oils, I have to put this preface out there that I'm not a qualified aromatherapist and I can't prescribe essential oils as part of my practice as a naturopath. I wish I could, um, but they phased that out of naturopathy just the year before I started studying, which I was really bummed about because I just have such a beautiful soft spot for essential oils and I'm sure a lot of you on here do too. Um, so essential oils that I'm burning in my home really pretty much I'm going with my mood at the moment so I'm burning oils that like I'll, I'll open up my oil box and I've got probably about 20 different oils and I'll almost energetically suss out where I want to go and what I want to smell I'll touch I'll pick up a bottle and smell it before I'll put it in the oil burner but at the moment I'm loving my citrus um, and I don't know whether that's because I feel like energetically they're supportive of my immune system. Um, if, there, if I have any aromatherapists, come on, please um, feel free to add some comments or wisdom there about essential oils. But I'm loving lemon. Um, I'm loving eucalyptus. I'm loving, that's not a citrus, but I'm loving eucalyptus. <laughs> um, I've got, um, had lemon and lemongrass in there this morning. I've got wild orange in my bedroom. 
anything citrus I'm really digging at the moment. So essential oils are a beautiful way of just changing the vibe in the house, so bringing down the stress, as well as them having naturally lots of benefits for cleansing the air, um, antiviral properties as well, I'm sure. Um, and you might have seen my post this morning about indoor plants. So I've got a range of indoor plants, which, oh my God, I'm so excited that I've finally been able to keep alive. Um, it's been a long time practicing how to be a plant mama, but I have many thriving plants and I haven't killed them yet, which is super cool. Um, but lately we've been going out to, we live on the Camden bike track, so we walk out our back gate and we're on the Camden bike track and there's the river and the Camden bush. So it's a beautiful spot and there are gum trees everywhere, which I love, like who doesn't love a good old gum tree? And eucalyptus to me, it just has that really beautiful like it reminds me of when I was unwell as a kid and mum would bring me home a packet of eucalyptus lollies. They're a little bit different now. I don't really have the eucalyptus lollies anymore. Um, eucalyptus lollies or she'd put the Vicks on my chest. Like it's just a really nostalgic, um, comforting scent for me. And I think it is for a lot of people as well. It's cleansing. Um, it's, yeah, a beautiful, a beautiful product. So we've been going out to the bike track and just picking some wild gum. I've got a bunch of it hanging in my shower. So whenever I have a shower, I'm, it opens up the oils of the plant and they're going out into the steam. So I'm uh, like vaporizing as I'm having a shower. Um, I've got vases everywhere. <laughs> my, my office is full of eucalyptus um, my table and my kitchen is full of eucalyptus I have some next to my bed I love it um, and I think energetically it's nice to you know when you're at home like for those of you who are probably at home in isolation as well the four walls can kind of creep in on you a little bit I feel like it's nice to have something really beautiful and natural in the home that can bring my eye I always have one near my um, sink so when I look over to my kitchen, I'm looking at the plants as opposed to looking at the dishes. <laughs> it's a good hack. So my eye will just kind of skim past the dishes. My husband probably hates that bit. Skim past the dishes and then over to the plants, which is beautiful. Um, Renee, I love peppermint and rosemary and orange together. Ooh, that sounds nice. I just ran out of peppermint. I'm so bummed. I'll need to get some more. Actually, I probably could never, never stop buying essential oils. I want all of them. I want all of them now. It's my birthday soon. Hint, hint. Um, so that's oils and plants. Um, I've got two more steps left, and then I will be wrapping up this mini series, which I'm kind of bummed about. It's been really nice having this positive focus. Um, the I am doing a lot of washing. Gosh, that just sounds so fun, right? But I'm intentionally washing my, I don't mean like clothes, I mean the um, beds and bedspreads and linen and things like that. So I'm washing them a lot and I'm sun drying them as opposed to keeping them in my dryer. So my thought process in this is that the sun is really beautiful for killing off microbes, like little germs. Um, by getting them out on the sun and getting all of those things into fresh air, we naturally reduce any dust mites that might be living in those things as well. So we're hanging out our blankets over the railing to get sun throughout the day. We're taking our pillows out to get sun throughout the day. So we're reducing things like dust mites and critters that might be living in those kind of stuff. That's again another topic for another day because that's a minefield and a big one that I'm not going to go into today, like what lives in your um, in your bed and in your pillows. Um, but just getting some sunshine onto those beautiful things and washing in a, obviously a low tox detergent can be helpful. So I've been doing that quite a bit lately. Um, and the sun has been really nice as well. Um, and the last thing, which is um, not what I expected to talk about today, but when I was kind of dumping out of my brain, I'm like, oh yeah, we've been swapping over our toothbrushes. So we've been going and getting some new bamboo toothbrushes. And I heard this hack a little while ago that you should swap toothbrushes at the end of having like any type of cold or virus because the virus can stay living in the toothbrush. Um, also, what they mentioned is that if your toothbrush is close to your toilet, you should probably change your toothbrush more regularly. Uh, gross. I had never thought about it like that. But 
it makes sense, right, that stuff would be living on our toothbrush and we're brushing our teeth twice a day. So we should be really prioritising swapping over and getting new heads, go get a new toothbrush, especially if you're coming at the end of a virus or if someone else has had a virus in their family. Go out and get some new heads, go out and get some new toothbrushes and I highly recommend bamboo ones as well. Oh, I'm getting dead legs sitting down like this. Whoops. Um, so I think that is the main things that I wanted to talk about about what we're doing. So I'm just going to recap. So we've got stress management. I can't stress that enough. I can't stress that enough how important stress management is um, for your immune health and sleep. Like if there, and the two takeaways you can get out of this is sleep and stress less. Whatever you can do, however that looks for you. If de-stressing is going for a big online shop, not that I um, support consumerism, but if that's what works for you and floats your boat, go for it. Um, every morning I do my journaling and I have my coffee and I do some stretching. So that is a beautiful de-stressing practice for me. So um, I'm, I'm always thinking of ways that I can meet my needs throughout the day. Otherwise the days just roll into one and I don't know what freaking day it is. I don't know what day it is even when I am journaling, but you know, it helps me feel less stressed. Um, so stress management and sleep. And then we've got uh, essential oils, get some plants, get some gum, get some eucalyptus and bring them into your home, bring them into your shower. The properties are beautiful and your home will smell beautiful. Totally agree with throwing out the toothbrush after a virus. I know, yeah, I was like, oh, that makes so much sense when I learned that. Um, regular washing and sun drying of your linen and your sleepwear. I'm not sure what we call that, Manchester, Manchester. <laughs> I won't quit my day job and go into Manchester. Um, and swapping out the toothbrushes. So they're probably the top tips that I've got for the last video of my Protect Mini series. Da, da, da. So um, as I said at the start of this video, it has been really wonderful to collaborate. No, no, haven't been collaborating this time, which is different for me. Um, it's been really lovely to bring this information out to you guys. And I wanna thank you all so much for jumping on and showing your support. Um, asking me your questions. I'm glad that this has been helpful. Um, please, I want to be able to serve my community. So if that means there's something you want me to riff on, please let me know because I would love to be able to expand more on that because if you're feeling like you need more of that, there's probably a gazillion other people out there that feel like they need more of that as well. So don't feel like you can't ask me, hey, I really would love to know more about why ginger is great to drink, right? So if you um, are having those thoughts, let me know and I'd be more than happy to jump on and do a video about it. And I've really enjoyed doing this mini series so I would love your feedback if you've enjoyed it as well because if you have, I'd love to do more of them. If I can, I can talk forever on the knowledge that's inside my brain, it feels nice to get it out sometimes and it feels nice that it's been um, effective and powerful. So. I would love to know whether you would like more mini series because it's been a really enjoyable process for me. Um, and it's been nice, especially at the moment, to have a focus that's outside of my family unit. Um, so it can be very easy to get caught up in working from home and doing the homeschooling and staying in this little bubble and what's for dinner and that kind of stuff. So it's been beautiful to be able to step outside of that for a little while and um, share and connect with my community, which I love. so. Thank you so much for everyone who's been on this ride with me. Um, I want to remind you all of the Immune Booster Mini Consults that I'm offering at the moment. Um, so they're $40, they are online via telehealth and they're about 20 minutes. We always go over, I'm, so please don't um, book in an appointment for after our consult because <laughs> I really suck at sticking to time. I'm working on that. Um, so yeah, they, I wanted to keep them really punchy and I wanted them to be cost effective because we don't know what we're, like even though uh, I feel like it, for us our financial position is, hasn't really changed, I still feel really conscious about whether I'm going to be spending money and if I'm going to be spending money I want to know that I'm putting into the right places so I'm choosing to support my small business friends, I'm choosing to support local I'm consciously choosing whether I really need to buy that thing that I was going to buy now or whether I could maybe hold off for a little while. So I considered that when I created the Immune Booster Package to make it quite affordable. 
Um, and it's basically an extension of what we're doing here. So what I've done here is quite basic um, and quite suitable for the everyday population. But in the Moon Booster package, we can get a little bit more specific. Wow, specific. <laughs> So if you are watching this and you feel like you need additional immune support, um, if you have already um, already working through some sort of virus or illness at the moment, maybe the immune booster might not be for you, you might need a full consult, but we can work that out over the phone anyway, you can just pick up the phone and call me. But if you're wanting to look after your immune system and you've got specific questions, so if you've got autoimmune conditions or you've got a weakened immune system or you struggle with anxiety and depression and know that you catch everything going around or your child's got autism or your mother-in-law is... A, 70 and in a nursing home and we need to keep safe so I would um, yeah, strongly encourage that that immune booster mini consult could be really helpful for your specific condition because there is like this is just the tip of the iceberg in what we can do and what we can talk about and how we can support you so um, Rufina would love to know more about reducing toxicity around the home cool okay yeah I'd love to share more of that stuff with you have you heard of low tox life Rafina, um, the podcast, and I've got her book, and I'm a little bit of a junkie with low tox life. But yeah, cool, that could be a good mini series, huh? I reckon we could get some good guest speakers on that too, because there's some wonderful people doing great things around our area. And Eco, uh, True Eco as well, doing some really great stuff with their eco friendly homewares, home cleaning products, sorry. Um, all right, well, I will park that there. Uh, please, I have put the link in my notes uh, of this video if you want to jump on and book the Immune Booster package um, and watch this space for future mini series. Um, let me know if you have any questions and be safe, be well, um, and reach out if you need. Take care, guys. Bye.